Sup, Chooms? How y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, a couple days ago, a fellow hair loss witcher brought to my attention something that is purported to be a screenshot of results from the Phase 2 trial conducted in China of the Kintor drug known as KX826, also known as pyrolutamide. Supposedly, this screenshot was leaked, and unless someone is trolling us really hard here, the chances are this leak is legitimate. Now, Kintor's pyrolutamide, what it is, is a topical anti-androgen that appeared to be safe and potentially effective in the phase 1 trials, and I went over this in my last video on pyrolutamide, which I'll link below. So, on March 7th of this year, Kintor announced they had finished enrolling 160 subjects from China in the phase 2 trial, and shortly after, they announced starting a phase 2 trial in the United States, as well as a phase 3 chi trial in China. The Chinese phase 2 study results were supposed to be released in June, but apparently someone copied this table from the documents Kintor was preparing for their announcement of the results. The table has the Kintor logo on it, so probably it's real, although I must confess it would be pretty hilarious if somebody invented this just to troll us all. If it is real, my analysis is this. If you look at the left-hand side of the table, and I'm sorry it's blurry, but that's how it was posted, the left-hand side just shows the clinical characteristics of the people in the study who I believe are all men. The average age was 35.6 years, and the Norwood scales range from 3 to 5. For some reason, they include data on smoking, though I'm not sure why that's too relevant. The right-hand side gives the results. There were three study groups. One got 2.5 milligrams of pyrolutamide topically twice per day, one got 5 milligrams twice per day, and then there was a placebo group. The numbers in the first row are the changes in hair counts from baseline after 24 weeks of each treatment. TAHC stands for Target Area Hair Count. One problem in interpreting these numbers is we don't know how big the target area was. Maybe it was one square centimeter like in a lot of studies, but we don't know for sure. In any case, there was an increase of 14.75 hairs in the 2.5 milligram twice per day group, an increase of 22.73 hairs in the 5 milligram twice per day group, but also an increase in the placebo group of 9.43 hairs. So that's quite a placebo effect. The increase in the two treatment groups was statistically significant compared to baseline, though only the 5 milligram twice per day group had an increase significantly greater than placebo. So how do these changes compare to finasteride and dutasteride? Well, in the study from 2006 by Olson that I went over in my optimal dosing of dutasteride video, which I'll link below, 2.5 milligrams daily of dutasteride caused an increase of 109.6 hairs, and finasteride 5 milligrams per day caused an increase of 75.6 hairs after 24 weeks. But this was per square inch, not per square centimeter. Now, one square inch is about 6 0.452 square centimeters. So if Kintor used a target area of one square centimeter, which is a big if since we don't really know, then converting the dutasteride and finasteride results I just gave to square centimeters would mean that dutasteride at 2.5 milligrams daily would give an increase of 16.9 hairs per square centimeter, and finasteride at 5 milligrams daily would give an increase of 11.7 hairs per square centimeter. So if these are the proper units, that looks extremely good for pyrolutamide since it looks to be even better than 2.5 milligrams of dutasteride, which today is the strongest hair loss treatment available on the market that can be taken safely. Remember though, the placebo group also had an increase of 9.43 in this study, so the magnitude of changes on top of the placebo effect was only about a 5 hair difference for the 2.5 milligram dose of pyrolutamide and 13 hairs for the 5 milligram dose. On the other hand, in the Olsten study I just quoted, the placebo group actually lost 32 hairs per square inch, so the magnitude of the dutasteride and finasteride effects was greater than what I just calculated. It was more like 22 hairs per square centimeter for dutasteride and 17 hairs per square centimeter for finasteride. Well, until we know more details, we are maybe comparing apples and oranges here, but the point is that the phase 2 pyrolutamide study looks like it is very positive, at least for the 5 milligram twice per day dose, and maybe has results comparable to or even better than standard hair loss treatments like finasteride, dutasteride, and minoxidil. We'll probably have to wait a bit longer to get the full results, and remember, the drug still has yet to finish its phase 2 and phase 3 trials in the United States, as well as its phase 3 trial in China, before it will become commercially available, but the results still do look very encouraging. 
We have to keep in mind though that there is no mention of side effects in this table. One big concern with antiandrogens is if they absorb through the skin systemically since that can cause the blockage of androgens throughout the body which wouldn't be good. So we need to hear about side effects in the study but the proposed mechanism of the drug suggests that it doesn't absorb systemically. So if this can be replicated in clinical trials then we may very well have a breakthrough on our hands here. So I'm sure you guys all want to know when you can get your hands on this treatment. Well as far as timing for FDA approval, the U.S. Phase 2 trial just started January 31st of this year and is expected to be finished by January of next year. Most likely there will need to be a Phase 3 U.S. trial before the FDA will grant approval. So we are looking at at least a couple of years before FDA approval, possibly a bit longer. So I'd estimate a 2024 to 2026 release date in the United States. However, Kintor expects the Chinese Phase 3 study, which will enroll 416 subjects, to be completed by the end of the year. I don't know how long the Chinese bureaucracy will then take to approve the drug, but possibly this drug could be available in China as early as 2023, which means that even if it isn't available in the United States, you will probably be able to find it on the gray market, or possibly you may even be able to get it through a prescription by a Chinese doctor, and there could even be an online service that lets you get in touch with a Chinese doctor for this specific purpose. This isn't ideal, but it is still better than buying the drug through a chemical research website, and even in the worst case scenario, this drug will be available soon enough that most hair loss sufferers today will be able to benefit from it. So this is worth getting excited about, but remain skeptical about it in the meantime because there is still a lot that can go wrong in the phase three clinical trials. But I am happy to report that this is the closest we've gotten to a new hair loss treatment that shows potential to be even better better than 5-AR inhibitors and minoxidil. So as soon as the full phase 2 results are released, supposedly in June, we'll go ahead and go balls deep into the research and we'll have a better idea of just how good this treatment really is. So don't throw away your finasteride minoxidil quite yet. We still have a long way to go, but we're one step closer to something that may be the very first thing we can sincerely get excited about in a very long time. So I'll keep my Witcher senses activated on this one and we'll be back with more data soon. So until next time, my fellow hairless witchers, take care. God bless.